Well, good evening, church family, and those of you from our community or wherever you may be joining us tonight. We are thrilled to have you join us for what we call our midweek manna, this time in the middle of the week, uh, to take a chance to kind of pause and take a deep breath from our busy week and have a chance to focus on God's Word together. And again, we thank you for joining us tonight. We hope and trust your week is going well to this point. Most people I know, not all, there's those occasional people that are the happy-go-lucky that schedule doesn't mean anything to them, but most people I know, and particularly as I found myself getting older and friends and all, as we get older, we are people that like to schedule things, like to plan things. I have a, I have a planner, in fact, that I like to plan out a day, in fact, a week, a week at a time to see what's going on what day and what the schedule is going to be like. And Let's be honest, we, we, we like to stick to that schedule. We, we complain about routines, but at the same time, when we go through times we don't have a routine, we're ready to get back in to that routine. We, we need that from time to uh, most of us in our lives, of, of a sense of schedule, of, of a routine. Uh, parents try to teach that to their children when they're young. Teachers try to teach that to their students as days, and even as adults, we understand the value of that. And so we like to know when things are going to happen, when things are going to come. And that's a long introduction to say that we're like that even from the aspect of weather. That's why weather forecast has been a part of news for as long as news really has been in existence. And even today, weather forecast is an important part of it. We like sometimes, I like to turn on the news if for no other reason to watch the weather forecast, to seeing what they're saying about the weather the next day. We like to know if if we're going to need the umbrellas, if we're going to need uh, the rain jackets, if we're going to get to do the outside activities, if we're going to get to play the game, if it's smart to travel, all, all of those things we like to know, and so we like to hear those weather forecasts. And back in the days when I was growing up, it was all, always seemed to be a lot more hit and miss. Sometimes it seemed like when they said it was going to rain, it was blue skies and sunny, and they said it was going to be blue skies and sunny, it, it rained. And it was almost like the forecast is more just lick your finger and put it in the sky and see what direction the wind's blowing and see what they thought about it. But today's day and time has been so much more accurate thanks to the technology that exists and they, they show. And even to the point of them saying it's not just going to rain at some point during the day, they can almost be specific about when it's going to rain or days like today as we're recording this on late on Tuesday afternoon of this week when they had forecast that it was going to rain all day. And sure enough, it has rained all day and so those are things we, we like to know and we get frustrated when forecasts don't go as planned aren't as right and that's because we like to be prepared we, especially if we know it's going to rain we like to have those rain jackets and umbrellas ready if we know it's going to be colder we like to have the jacket it's a frustration i felt i remember a couple of years ago uh, i was on a seemed like two or three week stretch my Went to Sam's at least once a week for two or three weeks in a row, and I went in, and weather looked good, it was sunshiny, and I went in without any rain jacket, and I came outside, it was in the spring, summertime, and it was pouring down raining, and I was not prepared for that rain. And that's aggravating, and that's frustrating. And even along the lines of weather, we were going through a period of time, at least last week or two, of preparation for severe weather. It's tornado season coming up in South Alabama, and other parts of our country, of course. And so we talk about preparing for uh, the severe weather and hurricane season comes along. We, we do that and, and talk about that preparation. And my wife is one like many that a hurricane season, or her, we get news reports of a hurricane possibly coming our way. She wants to go to the store and load up with a bottle of water and everything else we might need in case we have a few days of being impacted by the weather. We're all like that. If we're honest with ourselves, we like to have this structure. We like to have that plan. We like to know what's coming. We like to be prepared for that. One of the frustrations, particularly early on with this COVID-19 pandemic, is simply we didn't feel we were prepared for it. We had to learn and adjust on the fly and even still, in some ways, are doing so. The reality is we're like that just a life in general. We like to plan out our life, not just from a certain day or certain moment or being prepared for that certain storm that might come our way in a physical sense. We like to have a 
plan laid out for life in general, what we think we'd like to see happen. Being able to marry the person we have dreamed of marrying or getting that job that we dream of or that home or the car we dream of or having healthy children and a perfect marriage. All of those things. And then all of a sudden when things don't go as we have planned, when the storms hit, it makes it irritating. It makes it hard. It makes it frustrating. It makes it tough to recover from. So can we prepare for the storms of life? As we talk about in the weather people talk about, the weathermen and weather women, the weather forecasters talk about, our meteorologists of being prepared for the storms come our way. Can we, in a spiritual sense, be prepared for the storms of life that come our way? And the answer, to be quite honest with you, is much like the storms and physical sense of life, is yes and no. We can't prepare ourselves even though we never know exactly what kind of impact the storms are going to have, we can't prepare as much as we can for the physical storms we face. And I do think we obviously can prepare for as much as we can for the spiritual storms. One of the most familiar passages is Matthew chapter 7, the end of the Sermon on the Mount, the great Sermon on the Mount that Jesus shares with His disciples as He he really begins his public ministry, and as Matthew records for us, it's kind of the beginning to the teachings of Jesus and his gospel. He ends that great Sermon on the Mount, starting in verse 24, Matthew chapter 7, by saying, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them would be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Jesus here as he wraps up his thoughts and his teachings in this sermon as we refer to it really puts it in one of two ways and talking about how we can't prepare for the storms. One of the things that I think over the years I have missed in this passage, even missed in sharing and teaching about this passage, is that whether or not the person built their house on the rock or built their house on the sand, it did not affect the type of storms they face. What I mean by that is the description of Jesus gives of the storms that came their way was the same. Did you notice that? The person who built this house on the rock, the rains fell, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on that house. The person who built their house on the sand, Jesus says, the rains fell and the floods came, the winds blew and beat against that house. You see, Jesus' description of the storms was the same. Well, what does that tell us? You know, I think it's Jesus' way of saying that no matter what you do in preparation in some ways, no matter whether or not you build your house on the rock or build your house on the sand, storms are going to come. I think too many times there's been at least a, a misconception, perhaps a misunderstanding, in some ways a, perhaps an inaccurate teaching of saying that if you do live a Christian life that everything is going to be fine, everything is going to be good, you're not going to have to deal with the quote-unquote storms, and that's not accurate of what Jesus is saying here in this passage and really not even accurate of what we find in Scripture. Storms are going to come, and quite frankly, those storms may look the same for those who are followers of Jesus as they look for those who are not followers of Jesus. We're going to have storms in life. Those storms could be health issues. They could be death of loved ones. They, they could be family trouble, financial trouble, relationship trouble, there's all sorts of things in the blanks they may be, but the storms themselves look the same. So the point of what Jesus is saying here is not that there are not going to be storms if you follow Him. That's not at all what He says. In fact, what He says is you will have storms, just like the person that builds his house on the sand. The difference here is Jesus is saying make sure you're prepared for the storms of life. This is Jesus' words and passage of the storms of life preparation, if you will. 
And the preparation is, is build your house on the rock. Well, what is the rock? Well, in some ways, Jesus is the rock. There's, there's a sense in which Jesus has always represented the rock in, in a, in throughout Scripture. And there's several verses and passages we can look at and point to, obviously, to indicate that. And I think that is true. Jesus is rock. He is, he is steady. He gives us stability. There's all sorts of things we can talk about in regards to Him being the rock. And I think that's an accurate aspect of it and view of this but that's not quite what jesus says here in this passage jesus get, tells us who the one is that builds his house on the rock he says everyone who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man that builds his house on the rock so who's the one that prepares for the storms of life well, according to Matthew 7, this one who hears the words of Jesus doesn't just hear them, but does them. And James' word is not just a hearer, but a doer. Someone who puts these words of Jesus, and specifically here in this context, the words what we call the Sermon on the Mount in practice. So Jesus is saying is, now, if you put the words and put into practice his teachings and the words of the Sermon on the Mount, that you, how you pray, how you give, how you treat others, including your enemies, all of those things that is mentioned in not, in not worrying, not being anxious, all, all of those things that's mentioned in this passage, if you put them in the, in the practice, he is not saying that you're not going to have storms. In fact, in some ways, he's guaranteeing you will have storms. But what he is saying is you'll be as prepared as possible with the storms of life that will come your way. I almost wonder if Peter didn't have maybe some of Jesus' words in mind when he writes 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. This passage, the context of this passage is not quite preparing for storms, but it is an aspect of preparation says in verse 13 of 1 Peter 1, Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as He who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy. For I am holy. Peter says here, you can prepare your minds for action. You can get prepared. Here's how you do it. Be sober-minded. Be self-controlled. Maintain that self-control in your life. Set your hope fully on Jesus. Live holy lives. And Peter is saying, like Jesus said, it doesn't mean if you do those things, you're not going to face storms. You will face storms. But having that about you will help you as prepare for the storms of life. That will allow you to have the rain jacket in hand, the umbrella in hand, the water bottles bought and prepared for any storm that comes our way when we do these things in a spiritual sense. And those storms will still be tough sometimes. Those storms might still be overwhelming sometimes. Those storms might take some cleaning out and rebuilding sometimes when we endure them but we will at least have a ground to stand on. We will be on the rock. So just some thoughts for us, reminders for us this Wednesday night as we've had, hopefully at this point and by this point as you're watching this, uh, maybe a clear day after a day or two of rain. But just a reminder for us and the great thoughts for us of, of the words of Jesus and helping to prepare us for the storms of life that we face. As we record this, we know there are some who are listening who are still dealing with storms of life or maybe in a storm of life yourself, maybe because of health problems going on or loved ones dealing with health problems. Problems. Some are still dealing from a COVID from a physical sense or having family members or loss of loved ones from COVID or other illnesses. Some are just still dealing with the loneliness that comes the way through this time. 
And we don't want to be insensitive to that. Please know we're thinking about you, praying for you. If we can help you in any way during this time, please connect with us and, and let us know. Maybe some are watching this who aren't familiar with our church family at Collegedale and you want to hear more about our church family here. We'd love to talk to you and discuss with you about our church family at Collegedale. You can call our church office, email us, send us a message on Facebook, whatever the case may be. We'd love to share with you more uh, about our church family here. We do invite everyone to join us for our worship Sunday. We will have a group assembly here at our, at our building at 10 a.m. Sunday as we worship together and practicing safety and health guidelines. And for those who deem it best to worship from home, we'll also have a, we will also have a worship video available, and it will begin streaming at 9.45 a.m. with the worship itself beginning streaming at 10 a.m. You can access that through our website, our Facebook page, or we're going directly uh, to YouTube and our YouTube page, and we'd love for you to join us for that as well. Again, we hope and trust you are having a great week and you have a great rest of the week. And let's close tonight in prayer. Father, we, we confess to you we are people that like to plan things. We like to know what's coming up. We like to know what's coming our way. And that's the way you, you created us in some ways. And Father, we also understand and know that obviously things aren't always going to go as planned the storm's going to surprise us. The storm's going to come up in life. And Father, help us to be prepared for that as much as possible. And we know that, as Jesus shares, the best way in being prepared is by practicing what He says, doing what He says, standing on the rock. And help us to do that. Help us to put those things into practice. Father, we are thankful for all the changes in our weather and our seasons we have, it is a reminder of you being the creator, uh, the, you being sovereign, of you being on the throne. And for that, we thank you and, and we praise you. We do know people are going through hard times. We know people are going through storms at this time. And we pray for your, your arms to be wrapped around them, for your healing touch to be with them. You provide comfort and strength and peace to those who are in need of that and seeking that during this time. We continue to lift our first responders and those on the medical fields, those on the front lines in our battle with COVID. We, we know it is still a battle that's ongoing. We are thankful for the vaccine becoming more available. We pray that you, you will be able to use that to help bring an end to this pandemic. And we just pray though that in the meantime, we continue to watch over those people and over us all, really, and protect us and watch over us. We continue to lift our leaders and the government to you at the federal and state and local level. We ask you to grant them wisdom and guide them in a way to make decisions that we as your people can indeed live the kind of lives you want us to live and have the opportunities to share with others good news about your son Jesus. We do thank you for your son. We thank you, thank you for the example he gives us. We thank you for the words that he teaches and instructs us with and help us to indeed do the things and put into practice the things that he tells us to do. And we pray all this in your son's name. Amen.